This is Twit. Okay, so we're at the third Tuesday of May. Wait, the third? Oh, yeah, third Tuesday of May. Uh, so we're able to look back on last Tuesday's comparatively sedate Patch Tuesday. Whereas we have seen past updates delivering fixes, as we know, for well over 100 flaws, last week was a mere 55 fixes affecting Windows, Exchange Server, Internet Explorer, believe it or not, Office, Hyper-V, Visual Studio, and Skype for Business. However, that said, there was definitely some excitement. Of those 55, four of, the f of those fixed were critical vulnerabilities, 50 were important, and one was moderate. Three of the vulnerabilities are publicly known, although, unlike last month, none of them are under active exploitation as of the time of this release, which is good. Unfortunately, it's not clear how long that will be the case, but it probably doesn't matter. There was one particularly juicy baddie that is worrying the industry a little bit. It was assigned the CVE 2021-31166, and it's a potentially wormable remote code execution vulnerability in the HTTP protocol stack of only the most recent releases of IIS, which is Microsoft's web server, for Windows 10. It's wormable because it requires no action on the recipient's part. An unauthorized, unauthenticated remote attacker simply needs to send a specially crafted packet, you know, a query, to any vulnerable Windows 10 server, and they all were vulnerable. All of those that were vulnerable were vulnerable. Uh, what? Uh, before the patch came out, which will run the attacker's code in the kernel and if that code chose to scan for other publicly accessible, uh, you know, or even internally accessible for that matter, hosts, we'd have a new internet worm on our hands. Consequently, this one carries a CVSS rating of 9.8 out of 10. And wouldn't you know it, some security researcher just couldn't help but show off their mad hacksaw abilities by publishing a working proof of concept, which is now up on GitHub. He wrote, this is a proof of concept for CVE 2021-31166, HTTP protocol stack remote code execution vulnerability, a use after free dereference in HTTP.sys patched by Microsoft in May of 2021. According to this tweet, the, and then he cites it, the, vul the vulnerability has been found by and uh, at underscore MXMS and at FZZY. Well, oh, that looks like fuzzy, doesn't it? HD1. Yes. Uh, <laughs> do a fuzz on your hard drive. Anyway, so even so, uh, this probably won't amount to much because non-corporate users who are more likely to have the latest version of Windows 10, uh, will probably have updated and patched, and are also typically isolated behind their NAT routers. And these days, few home users are running a public web server. Um, uh, and certainly not on port 80, probably. I don't even know if you can still. Um, and at the other end of the scale, it's unlikely that any corporate Windows server installations are crazy enough to be running the latest Windows 10 instances of server. Uh, this bug was recently introduced into the code and only affects Windows 10 server 2004, <laughs> poorly numbered, of course, and 20H2. So the two most very recent uh, instances of Windows 10 server, hopefully no enterprises are running those publicly exposed. If so, be a good idea to fix that because now there's a proof of concept posted about how you can uh, take advantage of it. There was also another remote code execution flaw in Hyper-V, which also scores the highest severity among all flaws patched this month. It even beats that one. That one was 9.8. This is 9.9. Um, Microsoft's advisory said this issue allows a guest VM to force the Hyper-V host's kernel 
to read from an arbitrary, potentially invalid address. The contents of the address, read, would not be returned to the guest VM. In most circumstances, this would result in a denial of service of the Hyper-V host. In other words, you know, a blue screen crashing everything due to reading an unmapped address. It is possible to read from a memory-mapped device register corresponding to a hardware device attached to the Hyper-V host, which may trigger additional hardware device-specific side effects that could compromise the Hyper-V host security. What that really means is we actually do know how this really bad problem could be leveraged to completely compromise Hyper-V security, but we don't want to say that. We just want you to patch it. So anybody who's in any way associated with uh, Hyper-V uh, and needing its protections would be well advised to, to patch last Tuesday's update. Um, let's see. In addition, uh, uh, there was uh, an update that addressed the scripting, uh, a scripting engine memory corruption flaw in IE, believe it or not, and four more flaws in Microsoft Exchange Server, which, con <laughs> which continues to dog Microsoft. This makes it the third month in a row Microsoft has continued working to fix that troubled product since the Jeez. proxy logon exploits in March. I know, Leo, yeah. they just cannot get it right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's an email server, and they, they just it didn't get much attention. And now that it is, they're looking at it going, oh. And, you know, this is, the, this is what we've seen before, too. Remember that when there was that spate of RDP problems and Microsoft said, oh, uh, maybe we should take a look at RDP. We haven't looked at it for a while. And then they just began spitting out patch after patch after patch as if, you know, they put their, their like the A team on it because it suddenly became important. And those guys are like, who wrote this crap? And they just, you know, kept finding <laughs> fixes for it. Yeah, it, it is. It's like the eye of Sauron. It moves around. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, let's play attention to this now. Uh, so, uh, otherwise, the update addresses a large collection of privilege escalation bugs in Windows Container Manager Service, an information disclosure vulnerability in Windows Wireless Networking, and several remote code execution flaws in Microsoft Office, Microsoft SharePoint Server, Skype for Business, Link, Visual Studio, and Microsoft Media Foundation Core. So, in other words... You know, hopefully it's it's a week downstream. You are everybody's already updated, and you're like, okay, fine. 